What's up, gang? We're going to evaluate the integral of x minus 1 divided by ln x from 0 to 1. And it's going to be sweet because we're going to do this uh, Feynman method. It's a trick that you can use to solve complicated integrals, kind of like this one right here. And I'll go through it step by step. So the first thing we're going to do is introduce a parameter, which is one of the things you, is part of this technique. So we introduce a variable other than what we're integrating. And in this case, we're going to call it t. And we're going to put the t right here, right in the exponent of the x. Now, where you put the t is going to depend on the type of integral. So I have videos on other complicated integrals where I introduce the parameter in different ways. Uh, this is just one way here. And sometimes it's a bit of trial and error to get the right parameter in the right spot kind of thing. So we're going to define this as a function of t because after we evaluate the integral, x is gone and it's a function of t. So what we want is g of 1. Then we're basically done right here. Now, we don't know how to do the integral, but we do know how to take the derivative. So we're going to take the derivative with respect to the new parameter t. And there's this pretty sweet trick that allows us to bring the derivative literally right inside the integral. It's called the Leibniz integral rule. It's pretty sweet. I derived it. There are some conditions attached, so check those out. But the conditions are quite mild. And for the most part, you can bring it in if, yeah, for most, most functions. Now, the, this becomes a partial derivative, right? Because it's now a function of x and t. But the derivative is not too bad. x comes out of the derivative. This is not the power rule because we're not taking the derivative with respect to x. It's with respect to t. So the derivative is ln x, x to the t. Calc 1 derivative. Anyways, I can always put it in the in the comments if you like. Uh, but this is the derivative. And my friends, this is the whole reason why we took the derivative with respect to t. Like, check out this out. The, the ln x in the denominator cancels out with this ln x. And we're now left with a super easy integral. This is the reverse power rule in order to do it. Uh, evaluated from 0 to 1. So that's pretty sweet. And if we plug in 1 and, and 0 in our limits, we get the derivative, g prime of t, of 1 over t plus 1. So one, after we introduced this parameter and took the derivative, we now created an easier integral than the one we had to do. Now, we don't want g prime of t, right? We want g of t. So we need to take the integral of g prime of t. This is like the fundamental theorem of calculus coming in here to get uh, g of t. Now the problem is if we take the integral straight up, we're going to be left with this annoying integration constant. So we're going to take the integral with limits to get g of 1. So if we take the limits from a to 1, where a can be any number we want, we'll be left with g of 1, which is what we want, minus g of a. Now we need to find out what g of a is, but a can be any number. So if we evaluate the left-hand side, we're left with our friend ln of t plus 1 from a to 1. And what number do we want? Well, if a is 0, then we plug in 0 for t, we get ln of 1. Ln of 1 is 0, so a g of 0 is 0. So that's pretty sweet. So let's just say a is 0. So if we do that, then this whole thing is g of 1 minus 0. And my friends, that's our integral in all its glory. It's complicated integral, ln 2. It's pretty sweet. Now, that might be okay, but check out, can you do this one? It's a little bit more complicated. This, the more integrals you do, the better you'll get. They're not easy to learn, but you can survive. Hang in there. Cheers.